What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, a little off base for what I typically do, but this is such a critical topic. I receive emails on it all the time, and we gotta talk about the difference between our credentials and our license. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, credentials versus licensing. Before we do that, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the TMC and CSE boot camps so that you are well prepared to pass your credentialing exams on the first attempt. Now, let's talk first about credentials. Right now, a lot of you are in school. Some of you may have just graduated. Don't, don't tune out on me on this. This is a very important uh, topic here, uh, one that... I just hear really honestly sad stories uh, related to this because of a failure to understand what are your credentials versus what is your license. It seems elementary, but I promise you, uh, respiratory therapists with all types of experience um, have experienced losing one or the other. So it's important that you understand as a professional in the respiratory care uh, community that you have to maintain both of these, your credentials and your license. Let's talk about the difference between them. Your credentials are things like your CRT, Certified Respiratory Therapy Therapist Credential, your RRT, the Registered Respiratory Therapist Credentials, okay? These two right here, these two right here are the two that for those of you who are in school right now, when you graduate and you take your MBRC exams, you will be working towards obtaining these, okay? Now, your CRT is awarded when you take the TMC exam and reach the low cut score. The RRT is uh, obtained or achieved when you take the TMC and you meet or exceed the high cut score and then take and successfully pass the clinical simulation exam. That's when you are awarded your uh, registered respiratory therapy uh, uh, credentials, okay? Now, those two are a must. You, you have to have those two to, to work in a state to get a license to work as a respiratory therapist, okay, as a licensed respiratory therapist. Beyond that, there are other specialty credentials that you can obtain. Uh, the first one here is your RRT uh, NPS. This is your Neo PD specialty uh, or specialist uh, credential. You have your RRT ACCS, your uh, adult critical care specialty exam. You have certified PFT, registered PFT, CRT uh, SDS. This is your sleep disorder specialist certification or credentialing. And then you have your asthma educator uh, certification, which is another credential that you can obtain after you have obtained your primary foundation. Now, uh, some states require you to have at least the RRT. Most do not. Most require a minimum of the CRT to allow you to apply for a license to work in that state. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But let's just first stay focused on these credentials. These credentials demonstrate that you have the foundational knowledge to demonstrate competency in whichever of these, um, the subject matters related to each of these, okay? That's what they do. Once you obtain your credential, you will do so through the NBRC, that's the National Board for Respiratory Care. The NBRC is your credentialing body. This is who you will obtain these through. Once you obtain these, they are not forever. You have to also maintain them. So you obtain them by passing with whichever one of these exams you are looking to gather. For the students watching this, you're going to be Gather, you're going to be trying to obtain your RRT. Okay, let's just, let's just be real here. You're going to be looking to obtain your RRT. Uh, and, and you're going to do that by taking the TMC exam through the NBRC, like I talked about a minute ago. Now, after that, you can take these other exams 
And if you successfully pass, you will achieve or you will obtain your RRT ACCS credential or your NPS credential. You do that by taking an exam for that credential through the NBRC. Once you have that credential, you then have to maintain that credential. If you just get it and never do anything else, you will lose that credential. Now we're talking about right now today in 2025. Now, way back when, you could be grandfathered in when they started the uh, ongoing credentialing program. But, but, um, but now they have to be maintained. So we don't even have to talk about the grandfather situation because you have to maintain your uh, credentials that you achieve. You're going to do that through the NBRC. Now, the credentialing maintenance program or the credential maintenance program offers three different ways for you to maintain whichever one of these uh, credentials you earn. The first way is to complete uh, quarterly assessments and submit uh, CRCEs, whatever the requirement is for that particular credential. The second way you can do it is you can get another credential. And so, um, for example, myself, I just recently uh, took and, and, and successfully completed the ACCS. So that is going to uh, refresh and renew my credentials for this five-year time period. Then the other thing you can do is you can retake and successfully pass the same credential. So when my ACCS expires or comes due for renewal, I will have had to do one of those previous three to, to show that I deserve to maintain this credential. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of RTs that want to sign up to just say, I'll just retake the exam. And, and maybe you do, maybe you want to, that, and that's cool. But that's one way you can do it. But my point here is, is you have to understand that these credentials will expire if you don't maintain them. Now, I encourage you to visit nbrc.org to learn more about these credentials, the process of obtaining them, and then don't sleep on the process to maintain them. And this is not something you just get and you got it. You have to keep it and you have to maintain it. You have to demonstrate to the NBRC that you are staying up to date to be allowed to utilize these credentials that you have behind your name. So that is credentials, okay? They are maintained and obtained through the NBRC. Uh, when we look at licensing, we see a different story. You see, your license that allows you to go into a hospital and practice at the bedside, that is awarded to you from whichever state it is that you desire to work in. So for me, down here in Texas, I have to work with my state organization to keep my license fresh. I had to go through them to get my license, and then I have to go through them every two years, submit continuing education credits, and renew my license. In Texas, it's every two years. I don't remember where I was uh, last week, but the educators there were saying they have to renew every year. You see, this is important because you have to now track and keep, keep in your mind, when is my license due for renewal? How many CRCEs do I need to, to meet that renewal process? Depending on where you are, um, like down here in Texas, we have a certain amount of medical ethics continuing education that we have to have. We also have to have a human trafficking um, course that we have to show that we've completed to renew our license. Now, that's going to be different depending on which state you're a part of and what your state requires for you to hold your license. One, to give you a license and then two, to renew your license. Now these two things don't always match. Your, your, your credentials may set to expire on a year that is different than your license renewal. 
That is why it is very important to make sure that your information is up to date in both with your, with your state licensing organization as well as with the NBRC for your credentialing um, information so that the communication that goes out you will receive it, but also for you to stay plugged in to both of these organizations, the NBRC for, to maintain your credentials and your state licensing organization to maintain your license. So you know the requirements you need. The last thing you wanna do is get out here and start working and then go to renew your license six, seven, eight years down the road and find out that your credentials have expired. And now you can't get a license because you don't have any credentials. You see, the first step in getting to the bedside, to, to, to be operating at the bedside in any of these states, is to, one, graduate from a, an accredited respiratory care program. Step two is to pass your credentialing exams at the acceptable level for that state, whether it's the CRT or the RRT. And then step three is to then get your license to practice in that state, to operate, to, to stand at a bedside and take care of, 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 of sick individuals that need your assistance and expertise as a respiratory therapist. You've got to maintain both of those credentials and license. You, 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 can't, um, you can have credentials without a license. But uh, to my knowledge, you cannot have a license without credentials. And so my point here is to realize that these are two different things. You have your credentials here and you need those so you can get your license and you have to maintain both of them within whatever the, the deadlines are and the expiration dates are for each of those either credentials or license. OK, so keep that in mind. It's something that I, I see, I, 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 it breaks my heart when I get an email from somebody that says, I didn't know my credentials were going to expire and I have to take the exam again. And I'm like, oh, and I can't get my license until I retake the exam and, and I can't go three months without working. So I need to get, I need to get this exam done in, by next week. That's a bad situation and you don't want to be in it, okay? It's not the end of the world. You can do it. It's, it's overcomable, but... It just, let's just not put ourselves in that situation. Let's maintain our credentials and our license how we should so we can go out there and continue working without any interruptions in that. Okay, now, I know what some of you are thinking. Are you saying that for me to practice, to be a respiratory therapist in Texas, Florida, and, and, and New York, that I have to get three different licenses? And the answer to that question is yes. Where, whichever state you desire to, to, to work in, multiple of them, you're going to have to get a license in that state. If you're a traveler and you're like, you know, or you want to be a traveler, you have to understand that, that you can't just go and say, well, I want to work in, I, I want to go work in, in, in New Mexico. Uh, and I have my RRT, so I should be able to work in New Mexico. No, your RRT doesn't grant you access to the patients in the hospital. You're going to need a New Mexico license. And so you've got to get multiple license for whichever states you're going to be working in. Now, I will tell you some exciting news over here. RCIC, this is the Respiratory Care Interstate Compact. This is a big project that is um, underway right now through the AARC. They are kind of spearheading this. And what um, Respiratory Care Interstate Compact is, is a license that will exp expand across multiple states. And so you have these states that come together and create a compact and they say if you have this, um, if you work in these states, then you only need one license to work in this, this compact of states, whatever that is. Now it's still in development, it's still in works, but if that interests you and you like the sound of that, then I'm going to encourage you to go to aarc.org to uh, find out more about it. What I can tell you right now is that this has to be initiated from the state level, but the AARC can guide you on how to initiate this at your state level. Okay, and so uh, just some, some uh, exciting stuff coming out of there. We've been calling for this for uh, quite a while now in getting this to where it's like, you know, can I get one license allow me to work in multiple different states? It's in the works. Get involved with the AARC if you want to know more about that. And then uh, finally, um, I appreciate you for watching. Th this topic right here, like I said, it's not one of my routine um, educational 
uh, presentations uh, over respiratory care related theories, principles, um, you know, modalities, things like that. But this as, is as important as any other conversation that I have out there right now. Because without understanding this, then you can't even get to the bedside to, to take care of those patients, to utilize the other videos that talk about PEEP and all the other fancy stuff that we do as respiratory therapists. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Respiratory Coach. Hey, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Stay right here on YouTube. Check out another video, uh, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. And then finally, respiratorycoach.com. The TMC and CSE boot camps are parked right there waiting for you to assist you in passing your credentialing exams to get that RRT on the first attempt. Hey, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.